Today, I'll be sharing some tips and tricks on how I created this blue burst effect on my guitar project, and I'll even share how to avoid all the mistakes I made while doing it. Stick around to the end of the video and see how it all turned out. So I started this project out by mixing up some really light blue dye. I'm using a water dissolvable trans tint dye for this project. It's a dry powder and to mix it up, all you have to do is boil some water, mix it together. And I decided to use these little quarter pint jars for mixing it because they're really easy to store and won't stain like a plastic cup would. Once I started applying the first layer, I noticed right away that everything was going wrong. Unfortunately, there was a lot of glue spots still in the veneer. I was really worried this was gonna ruin the entire project and that I'd have to paint the whole thing like solid blue or something. I'm not sure how to detect these glue spots without dye, so if you have any ideas, make sure you hit me up in the comments down below. Uh, they're just really hard to see, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. All I decided to do was continue applying the light thin layer of blue dye and then sanding it back later on. One of my goals with this project was to sand it as little as possible. As a woodworker, I obviously hate sanding, but more so these guitar kits are made with ultra thin veneers and if you sand them too much, you can easily sand right through that veneer. Sanding too much can also reduce the depth of the grain, but I'll talk a little bit more on that later. Anyways, if you're in the same situation, just go ahead and apply a light thin layer of dye and then sand it back as needed until you have removed all of those glue spots, uh, without sanding through the veneer, of course. I decided to sand until I couldn't see the blue dye anymore. I feel fairly confident that with most of the blue removed, I would have also removed the glue as well. Next time, I might just sand it a little more before starting the dye, but let's be honest, I won't. With everything sanded down, I headed back over to the dye. You can see I had a little bit of blue left over in the grain. This is actually typically what most people dyeing their guitars go for uh, in between coats of dye anyways. They add the dye, then they sand, they dye, they sand, they rinse, repeat, shampoo, conditioner, yada yada. Again, I'm lazy and I have opinions about sanding too much, so I went with the die once, cry once method. Anyways, with that out of the way, I continue to apply the light blue dye to the guitar face. I'm always trying to work from the outside towards the center of the guitar. I think that this is the best way to do that and to ensure that you don't get too much dye on there or make the dye too dark. Uh, which is to say working from the lighter dye to the darker dye and always working from the outside to the inside. When I am applying the dye, I'm making sure that I'm not pressing into the wood to force the dye into the grain. Let the water just kind of flow from the rag onto the veneer. If you press too hard, you can actually force that dye into the grain in certain ways, which removes some of the depth that we're trying to create. So again, working from the outside to the inside, I wanted to add a little bit of black on the outer edge so I could start to pull it towards the inside of the guitar face and then start to get that nice contrasty blue burst effect that I want. As I work with the blending of the dark edge to the light center, I'm blending a little bit of light blue and the black just to get an even transition between the colors. The reason I am not just going straight to the black dye is because it's a lot easier to add more dye later on than it is to remove it. If we go too dark, we have to sand everything back and then reapply the dye, which I know I've already said like 400,000 times now, but I am really trying to avoid sanding. To get the colors to blend, you can use some water or alcohol on a rag and move that dye around. One mistake I made here was that you never want the dye to start to dry out. When I applied the black, I waited way too long before working in the next layer. And as you can see, it's got kind of stuck there and it's not pulling into the other color very well. So what I did is I grabbed a dark blue mixture of the dye and then ran that over the black. And it definitely started to even out the colors a little bit more uh, to get that nice blend from the dark blacks to light blues. Again, I'm not pressing into the grain. I'm just trying to work really, really lightly keeping that water moving around a little bit and working from the outside to the inside and not pressing it into the wood. You just wanna do this in layers and work really slowly until you start to get the, the blend that you're looking for. So one thing I noticed that a lot of people who are dyeing these guitars are doing is that they're using this layering method where they apply the dark dye first and then sand it back. 
I'm just not sure that this is necessary in most cases. And in fact, I think it removes a lot of the grain depth, especially in some of the curly or flamed maple. And to kind of farther my point, most of the high-end guitar builders, you'll see they don't sand in between dies too much. If you think about it, figured maple is wood grain that's actually changing direction and flowing through the veneer. Every time you sand it, you're bringing those peaks and valleys, or really the different grain types, to a more similar pattern. And I think that this is gonna take away that depth that we're looking for. Really, in a perfect world, you'd have this super crisp definition between the edge grain followed by the super straight end grain. This would give you really good depth in the veneer. High-end guitars are gonna feature better grain depth because they're typically hand-selected. Um, for you know, the, the makers are hand-selecting those woods that they want. Whereas production kits like this one are gonna vary quite a bit. I guess all I'm getting at is that because I'm lazy and hate sanding, I therefore believe that sanding is gonna remove depth. And with this super thin veneer and shallow grain pattern, I wanted to use it as a way to justify my laziness and stick with a simple die once, cry once method. Hey, did you know I have a podcast? It's called the Proper Tools Podcast. And we talk about tools and woodworking, and making and all kinds of stuff. I'll have a link in the description down below if you wanna go check it out. So this is one of those projects that I was really nervous about trying and I almost didn't even use the die. In fact, I was just gonna clear coat the guitar because I liked the grain and I was afraid that I was gonna ruin it by applying the die all wrong and then having to paint it or something. But once I did this, it really wasn't that bad. Everything turned out really well. You just have to remember to go slow, working light to dark, and I think you'll be really happy with the end results. I'll be doing a full build video of the rest of the guitar in a separate video. So if you're here from the future and wanna check that out, I'll have a link right up here for you. And if it's not out yet, uh, watch this video I picked out for you instead. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.